Good morning. Um, I apologize. I'm battling a cold, so please bear with me. Um, my name is Kim Wasserman. Um, thank you very much for coming out this morning. Judy, I don't know how I'm going to follow you, but I'm going to try. Um, so I come from Chicago, um, a state that um, unfortunately is dealing with some controversy right now. And no, my seat is not for sale here um, at this panel discussion. So I'm going to be talking today a little bit about what, how in the Midwest we're dealing with climate change. Um, and I wanted to paint a picture. And we were given some instructions of taking a snapshot. And I really took to heart the instructions that we were given. And I sat around for about a week trying to think of, well, what do I want to show people when, I, when somebody says snapshot? What do you want a snapshot of? What describes where I come from? So, and I have to do this. I thought, well, maybe my family is a good snapshot. So this is my family. And these are the people who support me in the work that I do. Um, <clears throat> And then I thought, well, maybe it's the organizers that I work with. So I'm going to show you a picture of them because organizers never get enough credit, unfortunately. And we do do work. We, and we do, don't get, pay, get paid very well, but we do do work. Um, <clears throat> then I thought, well, maybe I'll give you a snapshot of my community. 95,000 people strong, primarily Mexican, Mexican-American community filled with lots of culture, good food, um, and great people. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll show you a picture of some of the social injustice that we deal with in our community, like uh, ICE raids, immigration raids with AK-47s in our local malls, um, and the, our youth, uh, youth on youth violence that we're dealing with on a daily basis are some of the things that we deal with. Um, and then I thought, well, I don't want to down people at 9.15 in the morning. So maybe I'm going to give you pictures of some of the good work that we do, um, like some of the women in our, in our city who have... Um, founded the EJ movement in Chicago and across the nation, and our older residents who are working to shut down the coal power plant in our community, and the folks who are fighting for better transit in Chicago, and the folks who are getting their homes cleaned up um, and negotiating with Honeywell in our office and not in a downtown suite somewhere, and in Spanish and not in English, because that's a language that we speak. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe a picture of us growing our own food uh, might be a good thing, and the community gardens that we have in our neighborhood, um, or apple picking, or educating our community about the coal power plants. And then I saw this wonderful picture of Chicago. And I thought, wow, that's a really nice picture. I never see the city looking like that very often. Um, and I thought to myself, when, when, when was this picture taken? Um, was it taken in April when we had cougars um, in the city? Uh, they got killed or when the coyote walked into Quiznos and sat in the refrigerator? Um, and I thought to myself, it's, it's interesting in the last decade, we have more and more wildlife showing up in, in the inner cities of Chicago. And it's because we're pushing all of these animals out, and they're starting to push back. Um, and then I thought, is it June when the Midwest flooded? Um, and I thank God we did not lose as many people as we lost in Katrina, but we lost a lot of farmland. A lot of people lost their livelihoods. Um, we did lose a number of people, but more than anything, we lost um, more and more farmers, independent small farmers across all over the Midwest. Um, and unfortunately, we lost jobs and industry, and our environment is more ruined in the Midwest because of the flooding in June that happened. Um, and then I thought, is it July when the Chicago Fire Department shut down 10 beaches in the middle of July and August because of E. coli and bacteria um, in Lake Michigan? Um, I thought, well, that doesn't really look, you know, that's what our beaches look like in July and August. Um, so what do we do? We go in the fire hydrants. We open the fire hydrants on our street and we play in the water. Um, and then I thought, well, is it July 1995 when over 700 people lost their lives in Chicago because of the humidity and the heat? Um, it was July 13th. It was 106 degrees outside, and it felt like 120 degrees. And a lot of our older folks, a lot of the people on the south and southwest side of Chicago, which are primarily African and Latino, um, had no electricity for about four to five days. Um, and most of the people who died were senior citizens, unfortunately, who didn't open their windows and didn't have fans um, and died in the heat. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe it's September. In September, when it rained uh, 13 inches, when we normally have three inches in Chicago. And for the first time, we flooded. A lot of our basement apartments flooded. In 2008, we had 50 inches of precipitation. That's the highest since they started keeping record in 1871. Um, and all around Chicago, we had an immense amount of flooding. And then I thought, maybe it's winter. And I'm sure New York sees the same thing we see in Chicago when the first winter storm hits and you have crashes all over the interstate. Um, and the expressway. Um, but then I thought, it's not 1967 when the blizzard of Chicago came through. But still, um, in, only in Chicago can you have what we call a biblical week, where you go from below 10 degrees to 60 degrees in less than a week. This is Friday, and the following picture is Saturday when it was 60 degrees outside in the middle of, at the end of December, beginning of January, excuse me. Um, and you're talking fog, 
rain, sleet, snow, um, ice, and below 10 degrees all in one week. Um, now, I recognize that Chicago has a very long history um, of stockyards and polluting the environment, and we understand that. Um, but there's also factors in our community which are aggravating the situation, like the coal power plant. Now, we know that our coal does not come from West Virginia. It actually comes from a different state. But nonetheless, it doesn't make it any better. Um, this is a coal power plant that's located in our neighborhood. Um, and this is the way they bring the coal up into our neighborhood is along barges. And they dump the coal accidentally into the river. And those coal mounds are right next door to people's homes. And that ash is blowing all over our neighborhood. And the electricity that this company creates is not even for our city or our state. They sell it out of state. So we're suffering the price because somebody else needs electricity and because our government does not want to break up the grid. They don't want to power city by city. They want to power across the country. Um, I'm sorry. And this is the Fisk plant in Pilsen, which is also a Latino community, right by the lovely Dan Ryan Expressway, um, which again, high ASO rates right near the, that expressway, which happen to be low income minor, uh, communities of color. Um, and that's the other thing that Chicago is great for is the traffic. Um, this is our lovely interstate and our lovely, um, I forgot the name, the, the bridge in, our, in Chicago. Um, and this is, you know, when you have high, we had, I think at one point, the highest gas rates in the nation and a crumbling infrastructure for public transit, you get a lot of cars on the road, which also affect our environment. Um, down south in Indiana, the surrounding states, when they have below standard, uh, below average standards for their pollution and dumping into the Lake Michigan, this is what we get. Um, when you have only one state working for the environment and other states around you working against it, you're kind of screwed, to be quite honest with you. I mean, you're, you're, you're going uphill and you're going downhill at the same time. Um, so when I think of Chicago, that's the picture we saw earlier really is not the picture that I think of. This is the picture that I think of. And this is what our motto is. The mayor wants to bring the Olympics to our city. This is the postcard we should be giving people. This is the new Olympic torch for our city. Um, and you know, if anybody wants a postcard, we have them and we'd be more than happy to have you fill one out and send it to the IOC. Um, but when I thought of Snapshot, you know, as organizers, as all of us advocates for the environment, we all do great work. And like Judy said, and like Cecil said, and like Peggy said, it takes us getting together and really making our voices heard because now is the time. The environmental justice movement started off as an amazing movement and we are coming back in as, as an amazing movement. And if we don't do something now, it is going to be too late, both for Judy's community, our community, all of our community. So thank you very much for coming today and thank you for uh, listening to my speech. Someone should come and deal with this before I destroy everything. That's up. <laughs> if I touch it, it's over. Oh, there we go. Which one oh, slideshow. Okay. Just go down.